done. So it, the knowledge of this is very important. So you have to be extremely careful of the guide movement when you're doing this. Now, you should not pull or push any hardware inside or uh, inside from the coronaries where the guide is actively engaged. You should always disengage the guide. And uh, if you've had uh, the longitudinal stent compression, you may need to place another stent. You cannot leave this stent behind because this will cause stent failure. Now, imaging is very, very important when you're doing left main stenting because if you have under expansion of the stents, uh, Angiographically, that can lead to stent failure. And what clinical studies have shown that almost 34% of these stents are under expansion, under expanded. And this is more when you use two stents compared to a single stent. Angiographic ISR immediately follows under expansion, as you can see, and is an independent predictor of two year major adverse cardiac event. So one needs to expand the stent, and imaging is the only tool which tells you whether your stents have expanded or not. So <coughs> With that in mind, you must always use the imaging when it's available. You also need to provide hemodynamic support. This is especially true when the LV functions are reduced or you're doing a sole remaining vessel or you plan to do a rotational etherectomy or you have procedural complication like slow flow or distal vessel dissection. Now, this can be provided with intraortic balloon pump. LV assist device or impella. So these are things which are available. Now, why I'm saying so? Because if you stop flow from the left main into the uh, coronary vessels, this, this vessel supplies 70 to 80% of blood to the heart. There can be sudden cardiac arrest. Recording in progress. The other important thing which has to be kept in mind is that adjunctive pharmacotherapy has to be given to all the patients because you cannot just put the stents and not put these patients on uh, adequate antiplatelet therapies. So they have to be loaded with antiplatelet drugs. You're putting two stents and they can uh, reach the nose very fast. These patients also have to be put on statins so that their cholesterols are kept under uh, control. One second. You have to monitor the usage of contrast in these patients as they have LV dysfunction and they can go into um, pulmonary edema and a close follow-up is required. Now, whenever you approach these patients, it's a heart team approach. You need to, you know, uh, have your cardiac anesthetist and the uh, cardiac surgeon on board. And please do not by yourself decide that I'm going to do angioplasty or I'm going to send this person for surgery. These are critical lesions. These are lesions which supply a major chunk of the heart. And whatever decision you take is going to have a bearing on the results and the eventual outcome and as to how the patient does. So a heart team approach is recommended. There are factors in favor of angioplasty. If you have a simple osteal disease or if you have only left main uh, disease with clean vessels and if you have patients who don't have any other comorbidities in the form of diabetes, which is a great predictor of adverse outcome, angioplasty is preferred. But if you have a lot of calcium, all three vessels are diseased, and if you have patients who uh, uh, cannot be revascularized completely, then surgery is preferred. To conclude, I would say that left main disease has arrived at the crossroads of our therapeutic paradigm, and CABG as a default technique is being challenged. Till now, we used to think that anyone having left main disease should undergo CABG only. That is kind of changing, and now we are in a position to offer angioplasty to these patients. Now, there have been innovations in the field of stent uh, technology. The stent platforms have become better. There is improvement in the adjunctive pharmacotherapy, which is helping us and comorbidities and not the location of the left main disease has become the limiting factor. So what I mean is that earlier, distal left main disease was considered to be a big no. That is not an important factor. Now it is the comorbidities which determine whether the patient goes in for surgery or angioplasty. So you have to be very meticulous in selecting your patient. You have to be very meticulous in applying your technique because this is what is going to determine the outcome. Thank you very much for your patient uh, hearing and uh, I'll be happy to answer uh, any questions. Any chart is there, you can chart because uh, no. Uh, Mr. Dej will tell the overall chart, uh, do the chart.
I don't see any comments in the chat. Okay, sir. Anything is there, we will come back to you, Raj. If there are any question, you can get them to me, Dhirendra. I'll answer first. Okay, and uh, next, uh, next session is on twenty uh, second March. Okay, done. Okay, thank you, Raj. Thank you. Thank you.